Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your chef from Guru's Cooking Not In with Chicken Curry with Portobello Mushrooms For the ingredients, please look at the description below my friends This is 1 kg chicken which has been washed and cut into small sized pieces On this we'll be sprinkling a quarter lemon juice followed by a quarter black pepper powder Sprinkle it evenly and nicely all over. We'll add half a teaspoon of salt and we'll use our fingers to sprinkle it so that it spreads evenly rather than using a spoon. It's time to mix it up nicely. Make sure your hands are clean and sanitized and mix it. We we'll leave this mixture to marinate for at least 15 minutes. So cover it with a lid and leave it for 15 minutes. Friends, we have two potatoes which have been peeled and these are portobello mushrooms. They look a little brownish in color like they have been mud washed. We'll cut them into four equal halves These mushrooms have a lot of mud content so make sure you clean them and then you cut them and slice them into small bite sized pieces. Do the same with the potatoes. We'll keep them aside now and we'll use them later on. I've taken a pan, a large one. To this we'll be adding 3 tablespoons of vegetable oil. You can also use rice barn oil or soya bean oil. We are cooking at a low flame and we'll be dropping in an inch of cinnamon stick. So within a minute when the cinnamon stick infuses its flavor and aroma into the oil, we'll be adding the chicken. This chicken has been marinated remember for 15 minutes. In these 15 minutes friends, the chicken has left some water as you can see. Can you observe there is some water here? This is because of the salt that you had added. So this excess water we will discard. I am dropping it and now you can see there is no water. Now we'll add this chicken and stir fry this. Because if you add water, the chicken will not stir fry properly. So alright friends, now we'll increase the flame to medium or high and stir fry this for around 5 minutes. We don't want to cook this chicken completely because this chicken will again cook with the masala later on and that is when the masala will infuse in it properly. For now we just want to cook it like 35 to 40 percent and that will take around five minutes and how would you know that the first guess is five minutes at a medium to high flame and the second guess is your chicken will turn white in color something like this that is when you know you will extract it and keep it aside this chicken has infused its flavor and aroma into the oil my friends and it has it also left a little water so what you see in liquid form right now is water plus oil. So now in this oil we want to fry our potatoes and mushrooms. But since there is also water in here, I'm going to increase the flame to high and wait for this water to boil, bubble up and evaporate. Can you see that? It's bubbling up. Once it evaporates completely, only then will I be adding the potatoes and the portobello mushrooms. Not before that. So I'm waiting for one or two minutes for the water to boil. It has boiled. And now there's only oil left. We'll now add the potatoes and the portobello mushrooms. 
It's time for us to stir fry them. We will not cook these also completely. We'll just cook them half. So that will take you around 3 to 4 minutes maximum at a medium flame. In the meanwhile, I'll grab one onion that I've diced along with 10 cloves of garlic and half an inch or one inch of ginger. We'll create a fine paste of this in the meanwhile. Come, let's do it. So here's the paste of 1 onion, 10 cloves of garlic and ginger my friends. We'll keep it aside and use it later on. So now our potatoes and mushrooms are half cooked. Mushrooms don't take a lot of time to cook. So after cooking them half, we'll extract them and keep them secure. We'll use them later on. So friends, in this oil some important things have gone. Cinnamon stick, chicken which was marinated potatoes and portable mushrooms so this oil is rich in taste right now do not throw away this oil we will be frying our onion garlic and ginger paste that we prepared in this oil now how is that it's awesome so reduce the flame to low and then add this paste that we just prepared we will stir fry this and now we can increase the flame to medium high. Make sure you stir fry this nicely and shake it while you make it otherwise it will stick to the bottom of the pan. Beware. Friends it's important you cook it nicely. The aroma of the raw ginger garlic should waft through the air. It will take you around 8 to 10 minutes max to cook this. Only when it is cooked nicely then we will add the tomato paste. To prepare this tomato paste, I took two tomatoes and pureed them by adding them to a mixture and blended them nicely. It is as simple as that. So even the tomatoes that you added have to cook for at least 5 to 7 minutes and the best way to cook them is to cover them with a lid and lower the flame so that they don't burn and stick to the bottom of the pan. It has been 5 minutes now and I'll uncover the lid, this is what you see, it has dried up slightly and that is good news but it's not cooked yet we need to cook it even further the more you cook the tomatoes the more you cook your ginger and garlic nicely it'll taste only better and better but that doesn't mean you burn them so beware so i uncovered the lid just to check if it is sticking to the bottom of the pan and if it is burning it's not so I'll cover it once again and cook it for 3 minutes at a low flame. Good! It's been 3 minutes friends and now if you uncover the lid you can see it has dried up more. The oil has oozed to the top and that is when you know when the mixture has released when the curry masala has released oil that the curry is almost cooked now. It's time for us to add some important thing. Everest meat masala Yes, oh, yeah, we are cooking chicken, but I'm adding meat masala. Why because this is my wish. It's my recipe. Oh Yeah, man So two tablespoons large of Amazing Everest meat masala my friends if you don't have this masala you can add any masala But this masala is one of my favorite masalas and it tastes really really awesome for chicken curries and even for my meat or lamb curries like I said, if you don't have this masala, you can add any masala, but I prefer this one. So friends, please lower the flame and cook this so that you don't burn the spice. Cover it, leave it for just 3 minutes and cook at a low flame. Let the masalas infuse thoroughly and incorporate well along with the steam. It's important. 
A simple tip, masalas should always be cooked no matter what at a low flame because they're very delicate, very sensitive to heat and they'll burn and that'll spoil your rice. So cook them always at a low flame no matter what the masala is. All right, friends, as you can see, it's dried up nicely cooked. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to add the most important ingredient, chicken stock. To prepare chicken stock, you can look at the link above. I just added two ladles of it. I know it's less, I'll be adding more, but first I need to check the consistency. So let's stir this and see how thick it is. Because in this gravy, we'll be cooking the chicken, the potatoes and the portable mushrooms which are only half cooked and it needs to have a little moisture or water. So this is less, I'm gonna add a little more chicken stock now. In case you don't have chicken stock, you can also add water, but I highly suggest you add chicken stock because it gives you energy protein, rich diet and also some amazingly great taste. Chicken stock enhances your curry's taste up to 200% and more. Alright, that's good and like I said, you must have got a link at the top to prepare chicken stock on my recipe on my channel, do watch that. Friends will sprinkle 2 teaspoons of salt, I've just sprinkled 1.5 teaspoon first, I'll stir it and try to taste it. So let's grab a little, stir it nicely, shake it, shake it, let it cool down and then lick it and taste it. I think the salt is less, I'll be adding more. So when you're cooking friends, always remember, always taste for the salt and if you need more, add more. So one teaspoon of red chili powder and if you like more, you can add more. I added one and a half teaspoon because I like a little, little spicy my friends. And if you observed I sprinkled salt with my fingers. It's always better to sprinkle salt with your fingers because then it spreads evenly. With a spoon the salt falls at one place and it doesn't spread so be careful. Now at a low flame keep cooking for 3-4 minutes until you see it bubbling up. Can you see this oil oozing at the top? Yeah man. When you see the oil oozing at the top, you know the curry is prepared. Now you'll add the chicken which has been almost 40% cooked. It will now cook for 60% in this amazing, succulent, juicy gravy. Oh yes! So friends, keep the flame to medium high and then let the chicken soak in the beautiful juices and enjoy. And as always, to cook it nicely, and to let the steam do the magic, cover it with a lid and cook it for at least 5 minutes. It's been 5 minutes, I'm uncovering the lid. You can see the gravy has thickened slightly. The chicken looks as if it has crawled in and sucked up all the juices. But not yet, it is yet to cook. This is only 70% cooked. Did you forget we have potatoes and mushrooms as well? They will go in too and they'll go in now. I should have actually used a bigger pan but it's okay. We drop in three green chilies, friends, slit half and then mix, mix, mix nicely. I was saying I should have used a better, bigger pan but I didn't expect that I would be preparing such a lot of stuff so forgive me. Finally friends, fresh coriander leaves washed, chopped and sprinkled like a rainforest on the top. Beautiful greenish green. I love green, you know. I love all green things in the world. They're always good. Nature is my favorite friend, my best friend. After books, of course. Ah, yeah. I cut down a tree to prepare a book anyway. Nevertheless, that's a just a sarcastic joke. So, friends, you just put off the flame now. Leave it. Don't open the lid. Let the steam do the magic for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you open the lid, and you will see it is succulent and juicy. Hi, this is Eliana and she is sharing something with you and that is an Amazon gift voucher worth rupees 10,000 friends but you only get a chance to win this if you are a subscriber. So if you haven't subscribed to Guru's Cooking, what are you waiting for? One lucky subscriber each month will win one Amazon gift voucher worth rupees 10,000. So subscribe now and get lucky and also please do like my videos here, share them with your friends. Thanks with much love. Take care.